This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy and the birthday boy for today, September the 9th. He wasn't born 9999. That would have been funny. But anyway, he is now 72 years old. He is Joe Fiesman. Well, that's his real last name, as it will, but it made, it was a change to Feisman for obvious reasons. So anyway, Joe Feisman used to play in the NFL. He's a sports commentator, corporate speaker, and restaurant drawer. He was in the NFL for one team and one team only for 12 seasons with the Washington Redskins, where he was a two-time Pro Bowler and helped the team to consecutive Super Bowl appearances, winning Super Bowl 17 but losing Super Bowl 18. He was inducted to the College Football Hall of Fame in 2003, and he worked as, sports, as a sportscaster for ESPN for two decades after his career-ending injury, which was on Monday Night Football. He also worked as a color analyst on Thursday Night Football for the NFL Network with Bob Papa and Matt Millen. Anyway, since 2011, he's worked on Washington's preseason TV broadcast team and works as an analyst for the NFL Network. He's the owner of Feisman's Restaurant and Bar, which was founded in 1975. Amazing. He was 26 when he did that. And is a corporate spokesperson. Feisman was a was a high school teammate of Dallas star receiver Drew Pearson. But anyway, Feisman got a college football scholarship for the University of Notre Dame. And that's where they decided to change his the presidential last name from Feisman to Feisman. to try to get him the Heisman in his senior campaign. He was the starting quarterback in the sophomore year after Terry Henry's injury. He had the Irish do well. In 1969, as a, as a junior, he helped the Irish get to the top five, but a loss to University of Texas in the Cunnamal Classic. <coughs> they were the lot of The thing, the thing was, Notre Dame finally, after so many years of not accepting bowl bids, actually accepted a bowl bid this time to prove themselves. Mostly because with polls being now at the end of the thing, he had no change. So anyway, the Irish were ten and one the next year. They were the number. They had a number two ranking and shocked Texas in the seventy one Cotton Bowl Classic, twenty four eleven to deny Texas another national title. He was in contention for the Heisman Trophy, but ended up second to Jim Plunkett of Stanford. Heisman would set school records for passing yards and touchdowns at that time. He actually threw for 526 yards one game against USC in 1970, but they were still lost. Heisman was 23-2 and as a starting quarterback. On the career passing list, he's still fit, which is amazing. So anyway, Feisman was selected in the fourth round of the draft by the Miami Dolphins. People forget it though, that. And he was even selected in the baseball draft by the Minnesota Twins. Why? I don't know. So anyway, Feisman tried to negotiate with the Dolphins, but it failed. The Dolphins had Bob Greasy, but they didn't really have a good backup. I mean, Earl Morrow was kind of there, but his age and all that. So Feisman decided to sign up north to Canada for the Toronto Argonauts for fifty thousand a year. Now of course this is nineteen seventy one dollars, not twenty eleven dollars. So anyway, forty years ago. Forty years fifty years ago, sorry. In his rookie year, Feisman helped Toronto get to the Great Cup against Calgary. It was a huge one. Toronto was trying to end a drought that had happened since nineteen fifty two. Sadly though, Leon McQuay's fumble late in the Super the Great Cup of seventy one cost the Argos. And Calgary won their first Great Cup since nineteen forty eight, so they ended their streak. Their slump. He would do okay in seventy one the next few seasons, but didn't get the Argos to this um Great Cup. Feisman's failed negotiations with Miami actually worked out because Miami did use Earl Morrow in the perfect season. After Greasy went down. 
So Washington actually decided to get Feisman's rights from the Dolphins in exchange for the first round pick in 1976. Feisman would leave the CFL and join the Redskins. He was actually the punt returner for, for many of his years. So he was more a special teams guy, which was weird. He was a punt returner when he was a quarterback, too. But Feisman was named the starting quarterback in 1978. And Washington did well. They were 6-0, but Washington choked and missed the playoffs. Although it was harder to make the playoffs in 1978. Well, than it is now. Now you've got seven teams from each conference making it for 14. But in 1978, that was the first year they introduced the wild card. So there were three divisions, and whoever won, no, three divisions, the winners, and then the top two teams that did not win their division by record would meet in a one-game wild card. And that wild card team would take on the number one seed, unless the number one seed was in their own division. Then they would face number two. But yeah. Anyway, Feisman would be trampling along. And then Feisman helped the Redskins win their first championship, first Super Bowl, and their first NFL championship since 1942 against the Dolphins in Super Bowl 17. He looked good. He threw two touchdowns. The Redskins were still down by four when he made a major defensive play of the game. We all know about John Reagan spurling his way into the end zone, but anyway. After his pass was deflected by Kim Bocamper of the Dolphins, causing what appeared to be an interception and short touchdown, Feisman actually managed to knock the ball out of Bocamper's hands. That meant that the ball still went Washington, and then Riggins went on that touchdown run. The next year, he helped the Skins get to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 18, when they were heavily favored. I mean, scoring almost 500 points a game um, I, they, for the year. Unfortunately, though, they got shocked by the Raiders, 38-9. to Worst of all, the Raiders played the Skins in the, in the regular season. And then the Redskins... Um, were trying a screenplay that worked against the Raiders in the regular season, but in the postseason, they saw that coming, and Jack Squire has picked them off. He would set many Washington records. He even was the 83 NFL MVP. So, yeah, great job by him. What was weird about Weisman, as you see in the picture, is that he wore a single bar face mask, even though that quarterbacks wanted the double bar. And even triple bar. So, yeah. However, we cannot talk about Joe Feisman without mentioning the great injury in 1985. Giants were facing the Redskins on national TV on Monday Night Football. And then Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson basically were tackling them. It was 7 7 in the second quarter. The Redskins were trying to do a flea flicker. However, the Giants' defense was tightly focused, and they blitzed Feisman. As Taylor pulled Feisman down, Taylor's knee came down and drove straight into Feisman's lower right leg, fracturing the tibia and fibula. And, of course, Feisman said his leg snapped like a breadstick. But Lawrence Taylor, to his credit, waved for EMTs to help him and all that. So, basically, the, the Monday Night Football team of Frank Gifford, O.J. Simpson, and Joe Namath inferred from the start that he was calling for help. So, anyway, it was amazing. It was terrible. They went with the reverse angle instant replay, and it showed what happened. Feisman's lower leg bones were broken midway between his, between his ankle, such that his leg from a Foot to his mid shin was laying flat against the ground, and the other part of the shin was at a 45 degree angle. Anyway, ABC repeated showing the replay more than they should have, and they got in trouble for the cut. So basically, the compound fracture led to insufficient bone growth during Feisman's recovery. His right leg would end up being shorter than his left. Basically, Feisman's career was done for. 
Feisman never blamed Lawrence Taylor for his injury. Even though Lawrence Taylor did apologize several times. So anyway, there was another massive injury. 33 years later, on November 18, 2018, Alex Smith got destroyed and all that. But Alex Smith came back two years later to play in his final season. So in the CFL, he wasn't really that great. Despite the fact that, you know, he got the Argos to the Great Cup final, he threw more interceptions in passing than touchdowns. If I could be a little bit picky. The NFL statistics show he played 167 games as quarterback. Well, he started 124 of them. Well, oh no, I don't think it means, yeah, he did play quarterback. Over 25,000 yards, 160 touchdowns, 138 interceptions before his career ended with that injury. He still holds Washington record for wins by a quarterback, passing yards, passing conclusions, passing attempts. Weisman would help, would actually call Super Bowl 19 for ABC alongside Frank Gifford to Don Meredith, even though he was still an active player. Weisman would help ESPN Sunday Night Football broadcast from 88 to 2005. And then when NBC took over, he was done for. Weisman actually hosted part of American Gliders in 1989. Unfortunately, Feisman was replaced in one-night football with Ron Jaworski. And Feisman rejected an offer to work on ABC's college football coverage. So, yeah. He's been in a few movies like BJ and the Bear and Cannibal Run 2. Feisman fathered three children with his first wife, Sherry Brown, Joe Jr., Amy, and Patrick. The couple were divorced after Feisman's injury, which was terrible. However, Feisman had a brief engagement with Kathy Lee Crosby. But a second marriage only lasted three years and all that. Feisman was made to pay $1 million of marital property and $3,500 a month in alimony. Jeez. But he, he is married to a country girl from Memphis. Weisman. Weisman was a good player. And, you know, everyone remembers him because of his injury. And that is a fair assessment. I mean, knowing... You think Weisman, you think about his injury and all that. It was even featured in The Blind Side, that movie starring Sandra Bullock, which was a good movie. I actually watched it. So anyway, yeah, I like it. But anyway, um, Joe Weisman, yeah, he was a, a ESPN guy through and through. And too bad that Sydney football had to suffer to NBC. But anyway, yeah, he's still around. He still hangs around. That's good. I'm Jeff Dunn. Now do.